It's 86 degrees in coma, where area ball fields are alive to the laughter, screams, and yells of overexcited parents. Also, as a public service announcement today, at Coma News, we'd like to remind you that the Coma Public Pool is open and anyone's allowed to wear a bikini there. This is Coma News Daily. The Internet News Source Portal for the Town of Coma. This newscast is brought to you by Liquid Ham. Nothing quenches your thirst after another endless Saturday spent standing out left field and waiting for a pop fly quite like Liquid Ham. Liquid Ham tastes great. <laughs> I'm Shane Darvish, Coma Theater Director, an all-around fun guy reading you the news as reported by the serious and yet destitute journalists at Coma News Daily. My fellow hosts, Dr. Jimmy and his honeypot, D. Collins, are off this week exploring the wilds of darkest Africa. Not really, but that just sounds so much more interesting than whatever it is they're actually doing. I believe that Jimmy is actually at a rave convention in Las Vegas, but I'm sure he can make that very, very boring. So it looks like you're stuck with me, dear readers, on this baseball-focused issue of Coma News. That's right, baseball is in full swing here in Coma, as it is across so much of this great land of ours. And what better way to capture the magic and majesty of that field of dreams than homemade baseball cards? Unfortunately, self-proclaimed screenwriter and artist Dee Collins revealed this week that despite her best efforts, sales for her homemade baseball card collection have been meager at best. Collins began making the cards in her spare time nearly three years ago and has managed to assemble one of the most impressive card collections in the region while generating no additional income through sales. Whoever said the easiest path to making millions is to create homemade baseball cards was full of it, Collins said. Collins said she was surprised her handcrafted cards had not sold considering each card is one of a kind collectible. Collins' first sale to Michael Horncraft of Coma fell apart at the last minute. None of the cards featured holographic watermark that changes colors, Horncraft said. I only purchase authentic fleet or upper deck cards because they have higher resale values. Collins, who in her mind is an accomplished writer, has completely has completed nearly 1,000 screenplays and said she will likely try to bundle the cards with her screenplays to create additional value. I'm working on a screenplay sequel to Field of Dreams and a natural, Colin said. Actually, I'm also working on a sequel to Moneyball, which takes place in outer space and a prequel to Eight Men Out. I don't know how you guys feel, but I think it's going pretty well with me just reading this all by myself. In sports this week, we check out how the hometown favorites, the Coma Middle School Wolverines, have fared this season. A month into the season and still with no wins, the Coma Middle School Wolverines baseball players faced a tough decision. We had two choices, finish the season possibly winless or make the second half a completely different story, said Coach Jack Sowen. The black and blue decided on the former. Pitcher Ethan Davis's 20-hit performance April 17th at home against Barnesville was definitely not what the doctor ordered. The 15-0 shutout loss, Owen said, pretty much cemented the attitude of the team. Not only did it finally put double digits in the loss column, it also served as a springboard to the rest of the Wolverines' losing season. Since an 0-9 start, the Wolverines have won none of their last eight, playing more and more like the team players and coaches have come to expect. The majority of those first nine games came down to us beating ourselves, rather than teams flat out beating us, said Mom Sadie Cracker. But since the teams have gotten a lot better now, it's definitely them beating us. Cracker added that some of the early season struggles probably were due to Owen being a new coach and implementing a new, obviously faulty system. Owen agreed the players didn't have a lot of faith in this system of playing more small ball and manufacturing runs with team speed and simple execution. I keep thinking we'd get to a point where players started buying into the team, Owen said. No dice. Starting 0-9 is no fun, said Davis, who just turned 13, but it turned out that finishing 0-17 and was even less fun. The only surprise to him was the hopeless record eventually translated into more relaxed and enjoyable brand of baseball. We knew coming into the season there were some high expectations because people assumed we were capable of so much more, said Davis. 
Once reality set in and we started to relax and the entire atmosphere changed. I laughed a lot in those last games. A seemingly delirious Owen said he had drawn a lot of support from assistant coach Robert McGinnis. McGinnis, a former Scottish National Football Soccer League player, has never coached baseball, but was well versed in the art of losing. Without knowing all of the various rules and of this strange sport, it was not always clear exactly how we were losing, but I'm told that teams made some of the greatest plays against us and started to create their own breaks, McGinnis said. Owen said the team hopes to rebuild and develop the sky-high expectations by the start of next season. I think we have the talent level to make a run, a deep run. I really do, Owen said. I have no idea why I think that, but I do. Now let's hear from our friends at Jack's Organic Bikes, where a stolen bike is a sustainable bike. Check out their first Monster Organic Bike Rally this coming Sunday. It's the organic race. That will blow your mind. Two wheel engines. Insanity! At the Como Fairgrounds and a Dream Elevator. Sunday's organic bike free from your friend and neighbor. Sunday! A special parents buy. Compost maker! Get ready to get your sustainable stuff. Blown off! The module can it by call is gonna blow you away with Beth of the Clown. Dutch Organic Bikes is not responsible for the legal status of any of our monster organic bikes, nor are we responsible for any charges stemming from the receipt of stolen property. Please use your helmet, bike responsibly. In education news, we learn about some coming furry news as reported by the future news reporter Thomas Stephen John. His peyote-fueled fever dreams break come as near future news before it even happens. This is Thomas Stephen John, future reporter, back from a week in peyote country where everything shines with the light of a billion suns. And now here's this week's pre-news. Some of our furry four-legged friends act as companions to families, guides to the disabled, and aides to police and fire units. But other adorable cuddly creatures are best left alone. That is one of the many lessons Coma Elementary School students will learn on Friday, when reading wolverines, brought to encourage reading, will escape and run rampant through the school. The coming wolverine apocalypse came to this reporter in a sweat-soaked fever dream. The delighted squeals of small children in Mrs. Black's second grade class will give way to teachers screaming, they're in the walls, they're in the walls, when several of the reading buddies chew through their steel mesh cages. The frantic and disorganized school-wide evacuation may complicate future reading abilities of the children who struggle with reading and will now associate it with furry vengeance. But the incident will do nothing to dampen the enthusiasm of the leader of the Pause to Raw Reading Assisted Wolverines program, Natalie Peters. Wolverines listen to them in a non-judgmental way, said Peters, when contacted about the coming events. It kind of breaks down the emotional barriers and the judgment, because when teachers ask them to read, they get nervous and uptight. There's just something magical about a small animal snarling at you that helps build a lifelong love of reading. The program was implemented for the first time earlier this year at Coma Elementary. Each child has 20 minutes on Fridays to read one-on-one -on -one with the Wolverine. The class started out with one of the small predators, a three-year-old Eurasian Wolverine named Princess Buttercup. The cage-wrecking escape was likely caused by the addition of a second eight-year-old North American Wolverine named Puddinhead. Town Councilman Jax Owen assured this reporter that preventative safety steps would be taken. There's no bag limit on these suckers, right? Owen said. Are you illiterate? You're not alone. But you don't have to let illiteracy stand in the way of a successful life and career. At Parker Academic Institute, we help thousands learn to read and write every year. You can be our next success story. Write to us to request a free 283-page book on how you can overcome illiteracy. Our literacy guide is filled with hundreds of pages of important and helpful information that will be your roadmap to learning. What are you waiting for? Contact Parker Academy today and say goodbye to literacy forever. And now let's take a look at the Coma Classifieds. This week we're free cycling. Free cycling is when a person passes on for free an unwanted item to another person who needs that item. 
From silverware to mobile homes, people worldwide are choosing to free cycle rather than discard. Free cycle coma offer just eating table. I'm currently making a coffee table by hand from a single slab of black walnut wood. If you would like progress pictures or are interested in taking it once I'm done, please email me for more info. This table I'm creating is so special that I will only give it to an amazing individual. So tell me a little bit about yourself and how you are special and deserving of this table. We'll trade for baseball season tickets if you don't want to tell me about yourself. Offer plywood for exchange. I have two brand new stacks of 3x4 plywood, about 100 sheets. And I have three brand new stacks of 2x4s, over 900 up for barter. That's over $5,500 worth of wood I'll give you for free. Needed them for a project, but the design changed and now I no longer need. Would love to give you this wood in exchange for something I need. Here's what I need. A 93 through 95 VW Jettas, anything worth restoring, F100s, Pro Street, Chevelle, Nova, Bronco, FJ40, FJ60, Jeep, Bobcat, Skid Steer, John Deere, trailers, guns, ammo, construction equipment, whatever, surprise me. Now it's time to check in with Davis Montgomery III, publisher of Coma News Daily and leading light in our local business community. Here's his editorial on whether we should have baseball or monster trucks in town. It's really the question on everyone's minds. Thank you, Davis. Market for family social diversions or entertainment in Coma is ripe for investing. But this lifelong savvy investor is stuck identifying the best, that is, most profitable, entertainments for our fellow townsfolk. The unofficial pastime of our nation, baseball, appears to face decreasing popularity when compared with any other sport, hobby, or waking activity. While extorting millions out of the town council to fund professional facilities for a gaggle of drug-addicted millionaires has a certain appeal it occurs that more lucrative options are emerging. The growing sport of monster truck racing appears to offer satiation of the public's growing bloodlust, as well as winter employment for my small army of lawn boys. But if Davis Montgomery III builds a hippodrome of hillbilly hijinks, will they come? You tell me, my fellow comitants. Don't be shy to write, tweet, bellow, or honk your preference for future Friday night delights. When I am confident in your preference, I shall unfurl my stadium plans. And until then, adieu. It's that time in our broadcast where we let a small child who lives in coma tell us something interesting they've learned. This portion of our broadcast is called Did You Know? Did you know? Did you know there are three type of butts? You can butt in somebody. That's one of the butts. The second butt is that the butt that is this disgusting one. One that, like, there's a problem. Something that gives away a plan. Did you know? Did you know? We've reached the seventh inning stretch in our broadcast where we take a moment to thank some very special people. Chicken buyers! What do chickens have to do with baseball? Absolutely nothing. But for Coma News Daily reporters and editors who were bought chickens by some of our town's loyal listeners out there, it means everything. The latest chicken buyers include Tom D. from Manassas, Virginia, Becky I. from England, and Paul L. from Lithuania. If you'd like to toss some poultry to the hard-working denizens of Coma News Daily, check out the donate button at the top of the Coma News Daily homepage, and thank you for your support. And now for that special time in our broadcast where we say those who cannot remember the past will be jailed. This is Today in Coma History. In a very special Today in Coma History, we'll look to check out some of the recent baseball news involving our town's distant past and peanut allergies. In other already happened news, a long dead athlete in the overwhelming odor of peanuts briefly disrupted a minor league playoff game on Wednesday. 
sports fans attending the Coma Classic series of baseball were treated to a special performance by the ghost of Randall Rudolph. Coma Wildcats pitcher from 1923 to 1928, Rudolph died on the bench during a peanut allergy attack. He just walked right up out of the plate and threw three solid pitches, Don Johnson Michaels, Coma News editor and Wildcats manager said. If he had thrown real baseballs, we could have won the game. The stadium was simultaneously filled with the oppressive odor of roasting peanuts, causing numerous apparently allergic children and their families to flee. Some fans speculated that Randall returned for the anniversary of his near no-hit game in 1928, during which he died just in the last inning. It was the only bloody interesting thing that happened in the stadium all season, said Robert McGinnis. Rudolph was the heart of the Coma Wildcats in his day. He became famous for his extravagant post-game parties, sensational pitching, and severe alcoholism. I'm having the field blessed by one of our top priests before each game from now on, Mayor Dave Anderson said during a post-game interview. We don't need any more drunk ghosts wandering around town. And that goes double for the Civil War reenactment field. Anderson declined to comment on his plans for the reenactment field. Despite the spiritual assistance, the Como Wildcats lost 3-1 to the Williamsburg Willem Dafoe's, which is their third loss in a row. The team next plays the Hoxton Eagles on Saturday at Eagle Memorial Field during Bring Your Laser Pointers to the Field Day. How to Anything Make Your Own Pencil by Stan Bargmeyer how frustrating is it to be caught in an important situation only to find you don't have a good solid pencil? It's very frustrating. Don't let it happen to you. Follow the simple steps below to make your own pencil. First, using a medieval battle axe, chop down a tree. Next, using a saw, trim tree to a short piece of wood. Third, whittle it down to the shape of a pencil hollowing out the center. Add a piece of graphite. Fourth, paint, add an eraser, and you are done. Enjoy your pencil. Summertime means fun time <laughs> at Coma's premier assisted living facility for recently divorced men. A home for those guys is hosting a slippery, <laughs> Rose. Saturdays all summer long. Visitation time with the kids has never been so much fun, whether it's Vaseline, watermelon wrestling, what? in the pool, or balloon animals with Spazzo the super creepy clown. Meanwhile, our childless residents can soak in the fun in one of our three in-pool bars or the famous Karos Tiki Bar. When the sun fades, the party will get hot with a free show from the Coma Hula Hoos. Hoes. Uh, check out the Coma community calendar for the sad details. Whether you're a resident, considering a move, or just need something to fill your time, a home for those guys has got you covered this summer like a thick layer of coconut oil. Following is a blog by a Coma resident and is presented as a community service. And I personally love this because she's a detective. An LOL Detective Mystery Why is Baseball So Thrilling? by Mary Bell Davis, 27 years old, amazing life lift, awesome blogger of awesome things. I have a boyfriend, he's amazing. He created the Hug Club in Coma and he's been elected to public office. I don't see him a lot because he's so busy. But since we are like so together, I post all about him all over my Facebook. And he's rich, so we'll be super happy. Recently, my boyfriend said, if you want to come over, I'm watching baseball. It's pretty amazing. When I arrived at his house, it was a sixth inning, and he had had eight beers. Apparently, drinking is an important part of baseball. I noticed right away that baseball doesn't have cheerleaders. Boo. And it's hard to tell who's winning because both teams have really low scores, and they're wearing really ugly uniforms, except for the hats. I started asking my boyfriend a lot of questions about the game, and he told me to hush because there was a lot happening. So I wanted for something to happen, and here's what I saw. 
A guy came up to a plate with a bat, and my boyfriend takes a drink. Another guy on a mound of dirt across from him spits. Gross. And then he throws a ball. Gross. Boyfriend drinks. The guy with the bat either hits or misses and then goes on forever. Boyfriend drinks. Sometimes the guy with the bat gets a chance to run. Boyfriend shotguns a beer. Running guy usually gets tagged by a guy who was standing around for an hour until a ball came in his way. Boyfriend takes a shot of whiskey. Finally, running guy has to go back to a cave where all the guys hang out. Probably smelly. Until it's their turn to do this all over again. Boyfriend does a beer funnel. Although I don't think I'll ever care enough to learn how baseball works, I did realize what makes baseball really exciting, and it's the drinking. Mystery solved. This private dick, gross, is on the case. Daddy Warbucks, how's the job? Search Mary Bell, me. How's this for a job? I solve the mystery of how to make baseball exciting. You say bottom of the eighth. I say bottoms up, Daddy. It looks like we're going to have to call the game on the account of me. This announcer needs to do something with his day other than being your... I don't even know what I'm being, just hankering for some news in our little corner of paradise. Um, if you want any more information on us, or to have fun, or enjoy our stories, I don't enjoy our stories, I live our stories, go to townofcoma.com. Thanks, guys.